Doesn't matter, I'll leave it. We'll approve the agenda as is. All in favour? Opposed? Carried. Public participation. Can you grab the timer off? Or is it? Yeah, it is. In the drawer. Yeah. Ruth Simons, I beg your pardon for eating <laughs> while you're talking. We have two minutes. government about Syrian refugees. I know some of you are coming to the fundraising event on um, the 29th. I just wanted to mention it uh, here as well for others that might not be aware of it, uh, that 100% of the funds raised that night um, for the event that's actually put together by a group of really compassionate and dedicated people in Lions Bay, uh, who will be possibly forming a group of five with private sponsorship, will go 100% to supporting uh, resettlement of a Syrian family. If, you, if the board are inclined to respond to the province, you might want to mention um, that Lions Bay has such a private sponsorship happening. Um, and if the village wished to contribute anything to the evening, we are looking for four tables. Um, and to save us renting them from on sale rentals, if we could borrow them from the village, that would be a very nice contribution. Secondly, <clears throat> I noticed that there in the minutes there was reference to a uh, presentation last council meeting from my See the Sky, Owen Finn. Um, the minutes don't quite, I believe, reflect that accurately. You may make those, uh, make a, a change. Uh, Do you have a page number, Ruth? I'm sorry, I had... I think I may have noticed the same thing, but uh, if, if, right. just make sure we're talking about... I just about. urge the um, council to, if you could, what he was asking for, I believe, was to just send to the new Minister of Environment, Mr. McKenna, um, a reiteration of the resolution, get council passed previously, or if, in fact, you have any additional changes or um, you wish to reinforce your concerns about the safety of the wood-fired LNG facility and shipping, uh, there could possibly be a timeline for decision middle of February, and we're getting varying reports, so it is somewhat urgent. Uh, my last one, quickly, was the OCP amendment. Um, I must have been asleep when it was all coming through last year, but um, I was reading it tonight, and I wondered if Council were aware of the OCP amendment bylaw 420 that was passed in 2010, because I don't see any reference to it um, in this this amendment. Um, and OCP, or 4, 420 was an amendment to add in greenhouse gas emission reduction targets and actions and policies, and there's no reference to it whatsoever in this amendment. And I, I just hope that that wasn't an oversight. So. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we may have to revisit that because, as you know, we're doing final, uh, we're doing adoption of the, of the amendment. Mm -hmm. This is uh, bylaw 420, passed in 2010, amending the LCP and adding in the greenhouse gas reduction targets. Okay, thanks. You got a note of that, Peter? We'll, we'll address it when we get there. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ruth. Um, George Kobosu, you have two minutes to address council. Excuse me, Ethan. It's in regards to um, a report written by Nikki, public works manager, dated January 13th. 2016 on page 103 of the agenda package, where Colbert mentions as the noted contractor on site uh, regarding May intake. Um, I'd like to clarify a couple of points that um, the scope of the work that we were hired to do there uh, was to repair a, a creeping road that was between the weir and the water in or the settlement chambers, and also to um, scale the above road slope because of the safety issues, uh, constant rock fall coming down, right? So the work that we did uh, to repair the road was done in the uh, winter months in the high flow conditions. So there was no channel work done at that time. And that um, work was to be followed up with a, a second phase 
in the dry months, which would have been uh, August, September, and would have consisted of uh, bolting boulders in the creek bed and adding um, concrete to the voids to solidify the channel to support the tow of the slope of the road that was rebuilt. Okay. That work was never carried out. Um, it was not approved by council. So the other work that we did was the um, the stabilization of the upper slope. The stack block. Sorry? The stack blocks. No, no. It was um, above the road. Oh, sorry. I beg your pardon. This is, yeah, yeah, coming, yeah. This is coming from the corner, right, the last corner, yeah, yeah. into the intake, um, where we removed about 10,000 meters of rock, which was successfully completed, and um, there's no issues there anymore. Um, so I just wanted, for the record, to note that the second phase of the work regarding the Thank you, George. Right. Uh, I think I think staff will probably have questions for you on uh, uh, subsequently, if yeah, you wouldn't anytime. mind. They'll give you a call or email you. Yeah. Um, because we are trying to get to the bottom of this. Thank you very much for that. Because okay. uh, I've got tons of pictures of it and you know, records. I think we probably certainly this council certainly I didn't know that there was a second phase that didn't happen. Right. Yeah. I mean, it lasted for three years. Very good. Thanks very much for right. taking the trouble to come. Thank you. Thanks. Appreciate that. Okay, so uh, that being it for public participation, we'll move on. Um, Councillor Bain arrived at 7 11. Two delegations. Mr. Kathleen Blad. Yep. Welcome. Thanks for taking the time. Um, Honor Council, Happy New Year, everybody. Um, I've been here one more time last year with uh, one reason. Um, nobody could understand why we're actually being denied, uh, some of the neighbors and then uh, myself. Um, I brought here more things which uh, Council might be a little bit more easy to. We bought the property in two years ago, and when we moved in and lined way, we came here with family of two children. Now, right after we've done that, I think I'm going to start with the point number one, which is the native garden, which uh, <coughs> it looks like whatever was actually taken about that native garden, they have no boundaries. They don't know when it starts, they don't know where it goes. But the only thing they make everybody to understand is that they have the rights to do whatever they want, when they want, and uh, she put no questions. Now, like summer, five o'clock in the morning, people on our property going, using the water, start watering the plants. Seven o'clock in the morning, Saturday, Seven o'clock in the morning on Sunday, no hours of operation, nobody knows anything. My wife's my wife and my kids always they have to close their blinds to make sure that nobody's watching to our property, to our bedrooms. Like we cannot have any window open. We have pretty much no no privacy. And it's not just that it doesn't bother me that they are there. The problem is that it's we don't know when it's coming, who is coming and like there's no hour of operation in any way. I totally understand that it's a native plant garden and it's like, you know, uh, older people, they try to do something. But, you know, nice and clear says water restriction number four and the watering at five o'clock in the morning. And I'm asking why. Well, we are privileged. I'm like, privilege of having an 18 plant garden actually grows everywhere on the mountain what you actually try to grow here. like. I don't think that's proper in any way. And then I would like to, uh, I talked to some of the person actually taking care about that garden and they told me that they start here and then they move a little bit more and they move, move a little bit more and they move a little bit more and all of a sudden they apparently they took the entire corner and they do when they want and they were on our, our properties, we didn't say anything about it. Kindly we told them that when we even the first time when we moved in, I told them that you know I'm gonna start to do something with this uh, garden because it's not safe for my kids, rats, snakes, 
and then you know we started the work but apparently we had a big issue all the time when we've been asked to stop we stopped the work and then we came i talked to cancer of everybody else so we didn't do anything which was illegal now point number two uh will be yeah the south we place in the summertime everybody who doesn't have parking space at the marina they've been sent at South View Place. I have people, trailers, boats, park, left and right, because no, no parking sign. It's zero. It's, I, it is only one parking sign to not park in front of my driveway. We had people like urinating on the side of the street because they had nothing to do. I have kids, I have a family which I'm raising there, and people coming and going. And you know, at least one side of the of the street, which is closer to our property, there to not be parking. On the other side, I think should be a sign saying uh, "village only," like with permit or something. Like everybody who's not from the marina, they have no parking. They come there. There's no sign. It's no sign to no parking. And I have any other cars which are there for 24/7 park, and then we have the other cars. Like last summer was twice, we couldn't actually go in a house. We had to park the, the car in the street and walk up because we couldn't go up. So I would like, if that's possible, like the council to, to enforce a little bit of parking situation on that little street there because we are only two people and then in the summer it's like completely full. <laughs> now, number three on the agenda, Actually, now, yeah, number three on the agenda, Ed, I've been here the last year in the same time. Uh, we start a big, uh, massive work, gardening and landscaping in, in our property. It's the work been super impressed by the neighbors. Everybody likes it. It's a big corner. And then uh, we asked the, to just be able to finish the way it shows in the pictures here, like this is on a village property. This is village property right here, that rock wall, which is mm -hmm. um, the way it looks there. Uh, we asked for the village to give us permission to fix that on our own cost. <coughs> and it's not something which is gonna be permanent, like because even if the village would gonna wanna put a sidewalk on it, the distance from the actual property line to the asphalt, it is 11 feet. A sidewalk is 4 feet up to 6 feet, so it's always placed to put it. Even if they ever going to have to be moved, it's easy to move it. It's not that we are pouring concrete the rebars and foundation, and then they will never be able to be removed. It's, and the cost, it's our cost. We don't ask the village for anything. It's just uh, to give us permission to actually make it make it look good. If anybody likes it the way it looks now, I'm totally fine with it. But I don't think that would be. I think a proper finishing there will be will make the corner to look much more for everybody. Is your question on this number three that? Yeah. And I don't know this. Uh, approval of improvements. Well, okay, it looks pretty nice to me. Yeah, I approve it. But are you encroaching? Uh, or is there, then, it, this appears to be non structural, the you know, small rocks, yeah. and stuff like that. So, yeah. what, but the what, small rocks are, what, what is that's village. What is somebody request? else put that in a long time ago. Yeah. yeah. And you want to replace that with something that matches the rest of yeah, the wall? Yeah, that is correct. Yeah. So, okay. you, so you want to replace the small yes. stuff with the bigger stuff? Yeah. Up to the pole that we see in the picture. That is correct. Yeah, up to the yeah. I mean, you know, because the yeah up to the yeah up to the where is the, actually the sign, the native plant garden, whatever sign there. So that's exactly what we want uh, to to finish that. Even the neighbors, everybody's asking me why, why are you to go finish. I said, well, I, we've been denied, and we, nobody understands why. So that one, who denied you? Yeah, yeah, it's incorrect. Yeah. Who? The, the village. The municipality, yeah. because, the village. It's, okay. because it's encroaching on, on the public so, roadway. So this is an encroachment issue. Yeah, yeah. it's an encroachment issue. Okay. So your three asks are parking signs, not in order, yeah. or no parking signs. Not parking 
Um, I can address that pretty quickly, as you may or may not know, there's a parking plan underway. Okay. The priority in the first phase will be at the, the beach and all the overflow and ancillary parking around the beach. Okay. Uh, I can virtually guarantee that if the budget gets approved, which that's why we were so late today, um, we will have that problem taken care of. So, I'll pay for it. <laughs> Did you hear that? Once I said it, I'm not thinking it back. Like it's for the safety uh, of my family. It's not that you know people are coming in and out, and they don't even care. They go out, they they park around. Nobody cares. We know that it's a bigger problem than just there, but you have a yeah. particular problem. Yeah. The native plant garden. Um. Um. I correct to say that you would like to see some some uh, uh, restrictions, rules, uh, good practice around. Hours and access. Yes, I think we will ask staff for a recommendation on that. Uh, I think that's only fair. That you know, that's not carte blanche. It's, it's public area, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Can you come up with something? Well, I think your your um, parking committee is going to be recommending. No, these He's, people are watering. Uh, He's talking about the actual oh, the yeah, actual yeah. garden. The itself. people themselves yeah. are, are going in there uh, yeah. at five so, in the morning. And I, I I'm frequently awake at night, staring in your window. Uh, but I walking do, past. But walking past, but I do observe the uh, residents, uh, volunteers, uh, watering and digging and stuff like that. Okay, well, there's several issues there. Enforcement of the outdoor water, outdoor water use bylaw in the summer. Um, so it's spring loaded, so it's, it's, a, it's not really designated a public park yet, mm -hmm. but there are public park hours mm -hmm. uh, in bylaws, so we probably need to tighten up around that. And the third thing is on the encroachment, which is what it really is. Uh, the point you make is a good one that what you are asking to do is non-permanent so it could be removed in the event that that we put a sidewalk in there, we need to put a drain in there, a culvert, uh, who knows what. I will have to ask staff to bring back a report and recommendation on that one as well but I think you make a very valid point that it's not a permanent installation. Well, council, thank you very much for the time, cooperation, and I wish you a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. And likewise. <coughs> okay, there being no further delegations. Uh, yeah. You, yeah. You want this one as well? Uh, you guys want to keep it and to have it on file, we might as well have it. Um, How about just loners? It's legal. Yeah. 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 Okay. Keep on together. This point of discussion. <coughs> So we'll move on to uh, adoption of the minutes. The first uh, set of minutes to be adopted December 15th on page 11 of the package. I have no changes. I have a very few mi uh, minors. Anybody else? Uh, the first then, if I'm to go first, is under 8C1. Mayor Burr to produce a resolution on explicit action on the rail line. What was that? I don't remember that at all. Especially given that I ha we have absolutely no impact on CN whatsoever. I think if I remember right in the conversation, we are talking about uh, in relation to the emergency preparedness and business continuity. We're talking about the chemicals that run through here on the rail. Yeah. And we were wondering about what's actually being in those containers. I do remember the discussion, but what was the resolution I would have, what would we resolve? I'm not sure. <clears throat> is it possible to go back and listen to the, well, I guess I could listen to the recording. So, <clears throat> I guess the point is, I mean, we're adopting these minutes. I don't know, actually know what that means. I don't want to adopt it uh, and have it cast in stone. I think you were going to talk to the rail, railroad about something like that. Okay, then that, 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 that's fine. May I to speak to CN? on safety issues pertaining to uh, rail traffic? Fair enough. <clears throat> you, you good with that? Okay, uh, th that would be more accurate on the thing. So, did you get that, Peter? Yes, yeah, never to speak to CN regarding... Safety aspects safety. of rail traffic through the village. On, so you can always listen to that. Yeah. And then I had one more. Um, 
that was under uh, E, the action item is staff to request that the report indicates whether MVAs are in the village or on the highway. Not, not what it says. It's just typos. So drop the word the. It's MVAs and R. What we were looking for there was to understand from the fire service report whether the the uh, item was a, a village item or a highway item. Not so much whether it was in the village limits or not, but was it provincial highway or was it everything else? Um, and then under 10, the action item is future CAO, the young, and the same for uh, C, it's future CAO, you weren't CAO at the time. So what number are you on? 10A, <coughs> action item. Mm -hmm. And 10C action item. And that's all I have. Anything else? So, uh, motion to adopt with the changes as noted. Second. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Second set is the special meeting of council of January 7th, my birthday, at 5 o'clock. I had no changes. Any changes? Going, going, gone. Motion to adopt. And a second, all in favor? Opposed? Carried. Returning to the agenda. Business arising, we'll run through the action items starting on page 20, 21. Is that right? Yep. Business arising is the action items in the, in the minutes. Unfinished business is the action items report. <coughs> Definitely. I missed that. We'll do them together. You can sort out the agenda later. Cool. So in the first set of minutes, uh, the first action item was addressed by us in changing it. I will. I have not yet, and I will be doing this now. I noticed in the fire services report that uh, the incidents were called out by in village and on highway, uh, but I still didn't quite understand if it was the highway portion within the village, or it was highway versus village responsibility. So we'll talk about that when we get there. But that work has been somewhat started. Um, Peter, under 10A, you probably don't know this because we used your name in vain because you weren't <laughs> even here. You were to review the fees and, char fees and charges bylaw number 497 before it comes to third reading at the January 19th regular council meeting. That's now. Just threw it up in the agenda. You got it. He's good. Uh, action item. Indemnification bylaw number 496 was tabled until future CAO de Jong reviews it. It's tabled, so that's not actually an action item. It was, it was tabled, so there's no action item there. Really? No, it says tabled. You can take that on if you want to be one more guard. Okay, and then we'll go to the uh, action items report on page 21. I believe there's no action items in the next minute, no. Um, item number one, uh, no fixed deadline is carrying on. Uh, this is going to be bylaw changes. Item number two, that work has been provided. Uh, and Mr. Kobusu uh, gave us some additional information. So I suggest that we don't take this item number two off the action items yet because there's clearly more work to be done. Nikki did provide us a report but it's missed the fact that there was a second phase that never happened. And that's very germane to what we have today. It makes a lot of sense now that we mm -hmm. know what we know. Okay, good. So I'd suggest that we keep both one and two on. Uh, three, uh, this was a report coming from the CAO many, many months before you started. <coughs> I doubt you've done it, so we're going to leave it. Good? Everybody good with that? Mm -hmm. Four, Trees, Views and Landscapes Committee. I know we're seeing stuff about the Trees Committee now. I suggest we just uh, keep this one on because I don't believe that we, I certainly don't recall having seen in terms of reference for the as yet non-existent Trees, Views and Landscapes Committee. So I want to leave that one going. Good with that, Peter? Mm -hmm. oh, that's what it is. Except item number five is now changed. Can we change the wording? to the as as amended action item, which was that I will talk to Sia. Yeah. So I'm just going to put you that you will change it. 
has landed. Okay, this is also an action item. Oh, remember now, the action items came straight up. We, didn't, we don't actually need to go through the action items in the, uh, uh, in the minutes anymore. They go straight onto the action items report. That's <coughs> the change. And again, this needs to be amended to what we amended it to. Uh, it's been partly done, but I want to keep it on uh, pending resolution on what exactly we're seeing in the report. We'll, are you going to change the wording to what the wording was changed in the minutes approval? CAO de Jong to review the fees and charge of bylaw number 497 before it comes to the third reading now. Done? Uh, well, as you'll hear, it'll come back to the next meeting. Okay, but that item has been done. Not completely. No. You want, so you want to just leave it? Just to, leave so it keep, yeah. Okay, keep sure. it going. Just keep, keep it alive. Be, uh, February 2nd, is it? Uh, yeah. Uh, item 8 was never an action item. We can take it off. It was... That, that motion was table. <coughs> and that's it. Everybody good? Mm -hmm. Moving on. Staff reports. Uh, Peter, page 23, review of the tree committee and application number 64. Okay, so um, I've laid out some, some recommendations uh, at the beginning of the report, but um, uh, essentially I, I <coughs> used this particular application to just, you know, sort of have a look and see how this committee is organized, uh, what procedure does it follow, and um, looked at the terms of reference in, in light of the application. So, you know, I'm looking at it from basically as an outsider coming in and, and looking at the, how, how is this operating procedurally and, uh, and substantively. So I listed a number of, um, of, of issues that I saw or uh, gaps in information perhaps. Um, and, and it may be that some of these things are understood or um, not, not uh, necessarily required to be laid out in full uh, and addressed point by point in a recommendation to council um, at the conclusion of an application review. However, um, I, I raised them because they, you know, they jumped out at me, and so I wanted to bring them up and um, have you uh, review them, and um, and then determine how to deal with them and, and whether the tree committee wants to us review these things and see if there's different ways in which they can take these things into consideration. Some things might be, no, this isn't necessary to change, or some things might be, yeah, okay, maybe we can do, um, uh, you know, an itemized, or, or a listing of certain things, like, you know, confirming for someone who's reviewing the report um, that, no, there was no significant tree involved in this particular application, so that, you know, so the, the big ticket items are sort of crossed off and, and people's concerns can be addressed that way. Uh, because these, you know, the minutes of the committee should be um, brought forward and, and to council in, in draft form for, for information purposes um, at the time the, the recommendation comes forward. I, I understand that, um, you know, it may not be the case that the committee will have had time to have had another meeting and approved the draft minutes, so they're not necessarily going to be finalized minutes, but they're draft minutes that... that uh, the minute taker and the members of the committee can agree on uh, coming to the to the council meeting, um, and then council's got uh, a better um, better information in terms of what took place. Um, but I think, you know, just looking at the procedure, I think it's important for the committee, which is a committee of council, um, its its meetings need to be open to the public. Um, so <coughs> certainly. Um, the committee may, uh, upon receiving an application, uh, determine amongst themselves uh, an appropriate date and time to go and meet at the site. That's an important part of the process, obviously. But I think that there needs to be um, a designated time and place when members of the public can come and hear what, what the committee is going to recommend to council. They're going to discuss what they saw on site. But you can't really have an open public meeting at 123 Ocean View. Um, it's, it, it just, it's problematic. Um, it, and I think that although it's, it might be an extra step, um, that's something that, that the committee needs to look at, the council needs to look at in terms of how the committee is structured. Um, and then there are some... Uh, 
some issues I, I saw with respect to terms of reference and and uh, the committee's ability to to make a quorum. Um, the uh, the terms of reference require that there be um, you know, there's, there's five committee members ostensibly and um, quorum is three, one of which has to be a councillor and uh, two are non-councillors. So um, that might be tricky in certain circumstances and um, so you may want to consider whether um, you just have to have a quorum of three people, period, um, for the committee's deliberations on, on reaching their recommendation to council. Um, or alternatively, add another councillor if, um, if you want there to be a councillor present. Um, but even, even though the recommendation is to be formulated by way of consensus, um, you don't have quorum to achieve a consensus. Consensus is just a different way to make a decision. You still need to have quorum. So in the circumstances of this case, I think um, um, the, the committee would have had a, uh, an issue um, having quorum, and I'm assuming that quorum would have been lost in the process. Um, so I think that it's, you know, potential that there's no there's no valid recommendation before the council. There's there's recommendation, but I'm concerned about the process in, by which the recommendation was formulated. So um, council should have uh, a recommendation from the committee, which is should be a valid recommendation and then act on that. So my, my rec one of my recommendations is to refer the matter back to the treat committee to formulate a valid recommendation um, after posting a notice of public meeting so that um, members of the public can come if they want and um, hear the deliberations of the committee. Um, and um, yeah, that, that's, uh, that's one option and then uh, uh, a final option would be, no, just you can go ahead and approve it if you want. That's, that's another option, although it's not one that I recommend. So the recommendations are that, um, are that the bylaw, um, that the terms of reference attached to the bylaw, be amended to provide that um, any three members of the committee can be um, present in order to constitute a quorum. Uh, secondly, that uh, this particular application be referred back to the tree committee to formulate a valid recommendation after publishing or posting notice of public meeting, and that the draft minutes of the meeting, uh, sorry, the tree committee meeting minutes, uh, be appended to future council meeting agendas for information, and uh, that would be true <laughs> as well for other committees. Um, just a heads up and that the tree committee consider whether and how it may be able to address the issues identified uh, in the report um, if they if they feel it necessary to do so but to direct their minds to that in any event okay thanks peter uh that's great so uh there's uh, there's four recommendations on the table i'll take a motion and a second and then have further discussion do you want to motion them individually well, I, was, I was about to ask you that I would suggest individually. Okay, so a motion on uh, 1A and a second. Further discussion? I I'll kick it off by saying, uh, you know, as exemplified by the uh, ask number, um, whatever it is, uh, the previous page, four, I thought we had a Trees, Views and Landscapes Committee, a standing committee of council, uh, chaired by Simon Watterson, um, and that's about it. <coughs> <coughs> That's as far as I understood it. I now understand there was never a terms of reference issued for that. But the terms of reference are appended to the bylaw. Yeah, but this is a different committee. A standing committee called the Trees, Views and Landscapes Committee, not the Tree Committee, which is a select committee of council as set up by the thing. So some of these issues, if we do indeed go for a standing committee of council uh, to do Trees, Views and Landscapes, which I would suggest when I first conceived the thing, um, it apparently went, no, I, I didn't keep track of it until, as you see here in November, I started asking, hang on a sec, what, what about this trees, views and landscapes? Um, so some of these issues will become moot if that ever comes to pass. The whole idea, if you remember, the whole about the trees, views and landscapes was to try and bring all three into one, um, one committee's purview. <coughs> That's obviously going to be a future thing because this is a select committee. Is that correct? Well, if, if, Seeing if, you want to, if you want to bring additional considerations um, 
into the purview of the committee, I would suggest that you amend the bylaw uh, in order to do so. You've already got a, a bylaw that's been around since 2007, and from what I've seen and understand in the way that staff receives these applications and deals with them and how they get processed, it's been following the process that's set out in so the you, bylaw. I think it works, right? So um, if you want to add to the uh, responsibilities of the committee by incorporating views and landscapes in <coughs> what they are uh, supposed to be doing, then that would be something that would be incorporated into the terms of reference. Yeah. So. Uh, but that's a future question. Right now what's before us is uh, whether to amend the, the current terms of reference of the current tree bylaw. Um, the fact that it's a select committee yet is a permanent committee, is that that's a little odd, right? Well, you can have a select committee that's created in in a couple of different ways. You can have a select committee that's created by a motion uh, passed by council to create such a committee uh, in accordance with the terms that council wishes to have attached to that committee. Or you can uh, have a bylaw that creates that committee and council as a whole passes that bylaw. So you just created a select committee by bylaw. So you can do it by resolution or you can do it by bylaw. Yeah, the point is that a select committee is formed for a particular purpose and then disbands. Whereas this, right. this is mm -hmm. a permanent committee. Yeah, good point. Yes. So, so I wouldn't call this a select committee. This is a committee but, uh, that's, that's created by bylaw. There's two different ways to constitute those. Uh, not that the mayor is seeking to start another committee, but standing committees are set by the mayor. So the committees are set by council. So that's, that's a little housekeeping issue, which I don't really mind one way or the other, but it does call into a standing committee, which this really is in practice, requires an equal number or greater of elected officials, which makes I, it very cumbersome. I, I would respectfully disagree that it's a standing committee. What it is, is a committee created by bylaw. That's how it's been operating, and that's the terms of reference, and it's got all the, 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 the bylaw itself has schedules appended to it, which set out the application form um, and the considerations. And there's well, a, you're the there's, constitutional there's, scholar. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, uh, as I've always understood in all the classes we've ever done, is that there's two ways to set. The, it's the community charter says how you're going to form two kinds of committee. But if it can be formed by bylaw, that's fine. As a select committee, it's, 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 it's jurisprudence, municipal government uh, uh, um, uh, details. Yeah, so, so I mean... Just by way of comparison, where I came from, at the Squamish Lillooet Regional District, we had um, advisory land use committees for Electoral Area B and Electoral Area C, both of which were created by separate bylaw, and they had their own terms of reference and so forth. And that was different from setting up an advisory committee by way of standing committee or by way of select committee, as you say, to, to examine a particular thing and report out on it, and then it's done. Um, so, yes, a, a committee created by bylaw is intended to be around and to do the job that's laid out in the bylaw, but yeah, you pretty much got everything there, and it's the way it's been conducting itself, conducting business. So, it's been done, if you it's want to expand the purview to include other things... That's a I different question. It's do we want it to select or standing? I'm, I'm fine with select. So, the, the, the recommendation is that we amend the terms of reference simply to allow a quorum to be defined as any three members, not including an elected member. Now, that loses council some control. <coughs> Don't think that's important. Yeah. In this instance, we are relying on, as it is, it is an exemplification of the Lions Bay way. You can count, if it comes back and it's a, theoretically a heinous decision, it'll be bumped. Yeah, because council always gets yeah, this, it's, it's, council has to make the file. Yeah, this is only this is only the issuance of a recommendation from a committee. Yeah. That's correct. So um, anything else on the first uh, first of the four recommendations? So I'll call the question. All in favour and opposed? It carries. So good, thank you. You've got that, Peter. <coughs> the second recommendation is that the tree cutting application number sixty four be <coughs> referred back to the tree committee to formulate a valid recommendation after posting a notice of open meeting. This is arises as a result of there not having been an open meeting. Not that, is, that a, is that a requirement of the terms of reference? The current terms of reference? <coughs> As a background, I can tell you this is kind of a non-paperwork crowd. <coughs> and um, that uh, meetings don't always occur uh, with a coffee cup on a sunny day. And 
so they tend to be, and nor are all the members available sometimes. So actually some of the paperwork and structuring, none of which is onerous, it's just a matter of getting into the regimentation of it. Yeah, I mean, that's all very well, but, you know, we have uh, we have commitment to open governance, uh, and that means following the rules. Uh, onerous they may be. Boy, are they onerous. Well, they're not that onerous. I think I think your problem is going to be finding members who are up for that uh, yeah. level of uh, transparency. I agree. I see nothing alarming about no. that at all. I think it's, I think it's just, it, it, it can work just fine. Well, you know, what the second recommendation is saying is, do we refer it back to the committee to re-look at, waiting for quorum, and, and after having an open meeting, that's what the recommendation says, we can amend that recommendation, <coughs> or do we say, or do we turn down that recommendation and say, just accept 64 as is? Correct, Peter? Those, that's the choice. If we turn down that recommendation, is the opposite true? And it's not perhaps just applicable to 64, but even moving forward, yeah. do they, do they, should we be standardizing how they operate or just leave it? Bingo. In my view, having yeah. done this, to take some heat off, Peter, it should be standardized. Yeah. What I suggest we do is table B and go on to C and D. Because we are going to be getting a recommendation from the tree com facing... Well, I think a meeting has to occur between the tree chair and the CAO. But we have a recommendation from the tree committee. It's later in the package. But we can decide whether to take it or not. It, it's, it's a new, <coughs> let alone a conflict. <laughs> the uh, the answer is that, that, as Peter says, that if the roulette to ball just happened to stop on that one, it's neither here nor there. So that one I would consider just sits there relative to the request. I told you, and pending the change in the terms of reference. Yes. The, the, the reality is that what has to happen with 64 is that. Now that we've realized this issue, results to fix the terms yeah, of reference. We, we, need to, it's, it's, we need to fix the terms of reference, yeah. and then we need to do the tree committee business, call the public hearing, and have it on that, and then and go yeah, through. And, then, and there may be one or two others by that time, and they can, yeah. they can have it all at the same public uh, hearing. I, I, yeah. That is going to what everybody said. That is the way to go. Okay, well, then what we're saying is we need to refer it back to the committee until such time as the new terms of reference are issued. Now, the terms of reference that we've instructed, uh, I guess, staff to provide only talk to quorum. They don't talk to open meeting, although, according to our council procedures bylaw, all committee meetings are open, so we don't need to explicitly call that out. Um, the only thing that I'm concerned about, the fact that this is a select committee, one elected official is fine, even though it's not a select committee. We've got some work to do. I think this has to um, go back to staff, go back to the chair. The chair doesn't may have read this on their own. Uh, but I think the dialogue has to be between the two to ensure that commitment is there and then go straight to the procedure piece. So, like Mayor Burr said earlier, this is the, the Lions Bay way. It's a, it's a committee for the for the villagers to deal with issues that come up above mm -hmm. trees and things yeah. like that. And it doesn't have to be sad it doesn't have to have a council person sitting on it. It it we can we can pass yay or nay on it at a council meeting, but we don't have to sit on the committee. The important piece is that it's it they make a decision, it's vetted in public with mm -hmm. people in the and and then it moves on from there. Yeah. Well the current terms of reference say there must be at least one uh, elected official. Uh, it doesn't speak to open meeting, doesn't need to because the council procedures by law trumps that. It does have a slightly weird thing about quorum is that one of the quorum needs to be the council member. Not anymore. You've already passed the resolution. That, well, that's done. We're but it has to, it has to be changed. Yeah. 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 Yes. But so back to this, I think the chair has to meet with the CAO to get the house cleaning procedure <coughs> agreed to and then put it into place. <coughs> Fine. Uh, okay, and, and so what do you do about recommendation B? B does not specify a date for the for the posting of a, uh, the notice of open meeting, so it leaves it open to do something like what <coughs> Councillor McLaughlin suggested. The number of applications could be heard together. So At the discretion find, of the chair. We can, yeah, I'll work with the chair to streamline this in the best way possible while also meeting procedural requirements. That sounds good, thanks. Okay, so uh, we'll take the motion as written and a second, please. Motion and second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. C. 
recommendation that the draft minutes of the tree committee meetings be appended to future council meeting agendas for information. Uh, can I have a motion and a second? Any further discussion? No? Uh, call the question. All in favor? Opposed? Carries. And recommendation D, that the tree committee consider whether and how it may be able to address the issues identified in sections 3A to J of this report for this and future tree cutting applications. 3A to J is to do with wording of the bylaw. It's tightening up on the wording. And process and, and how they go about doing their business. I think it's something that the tree committee can, can look at amongst themselves and I'd be happy to discuss any of these things with them to assist in terms of how it moves forward in a way that everybody's happy with. This is just descriptive of how they made the decision and what yeah, they decided on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, some of these are specific to the important. particular application, some of them more general for the bylaw. Yeah. Is this a place in which to say and to uh, <coughs> consider uh, the necessary changes to the bylaw to incorporate uh, views and landscapes? That would have been at number 1A, I think, but you can add it if you like. I think this is separate. This is a separate matter. This is just asking the tree committee to take these things into consideration when they next meet and talk about how they do business. Yeah. And, and whether Let's it's not complicate the matter. As I suggest, I, I, I think you're absolutely right that we'll use the tree bylaw as the basis for the uh, the foundation of the new trees for use and landscapes committee. No wonder I didn't know what was going on because we don't have one. Apparently, we never instituted it. I thought we did. Now, if I'd had access to the searchable minutes, I would have been able to look that up. But I, I was pretty sure we passed something to do with uh, standing committee. As I recall, we had a discussion about it, and I think we decided that it would be suitable to move forward at a later date to, to decide whether or not it was trees used. Is that what it was? We, had, we didn't make a decision on it, and that's what happened. I mean, maybe we referred to the policy and bylaw committee now that you mentioned. Um, <laughs> no. might, might be, I don't know. Don't, don't remember. remember let's, that, uh, let's, uh, let's not put the cart before the horse, which is Peter's favorite expression. So, um, so maybe the committee, when they're looking at these things that I pointed out, can consider how they can best incorporate the other things like views and landscapes into what they do and come back with a recommendation at which time council can say, let's amend the bylaw accordingly. One, no. one of the no. things that could come out of it is that they may decide to look at it and decide that it might make some of the decisions a lot easier if it is trees, views, and landscapes mm -hmm. at the same time. They have a, a, a widened a, ambit. A wide, yeah. Yeah, yeah, a yeah. wider gambit to deal with things in right. different ways. So. You do know that you're going to have to facilitate this discussion. <clears throat> Lead it. lead it, lead it, lead it, in fact, not facilitate it. Well, well he's, he's going to tell us that he's not allowed. <laughs> well, he's, I mean, this is pretty much, uh, unless I read council wrong, I mean, we have agreed on the template here. It's a matter of getting the chair to buy in and to conform. Yeah, it's, it's council directive. Um, yeah. yeah, I just don't want to make any more work than we need uh, for something that's a nicety, but if we're going to gain benefit and a lead into what we really need in Lions Bay, which I suggest is a standing committee that says trees, views, and landscapes, for the reasons Jim just said, because it's a more holistic view, then I'm fine with it. If we need to resolve it and make it happen, let's do it. You know, there's no uh, applications in play other than number 64 right now. Now, yeah, that's something you don't necessarily want to opine on, seeing as it's you, but no, but I'm saying is there a time there's, issue there's, then? There's, no, there, no, and there are none in the hopper right now, so this is the time to do it. Okay, fine. <clears throat> Okay, so we have the recommendation in front of us as written. Uh, I'll call the question. Sorry, did you want to uh, did you want to address one D? That is D that I'm talking about. Okay, sorry. Um, uh, okay, I'll need a motion and a second, please. Uh, thanks and thanks. Moved and seconded. Uh, call the question. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay, so those four recommendations are done. Thank you, Peter. And we'll now move on to page what. Uh, 65 now, video filing uh, a quote. report is on the video planning report. I don't know the chance <coughs> if you recognize this from last year. Um, it's really just the first step in the audit process. The video um, issues this audit planning report, uh, which kind of highlights um, and explains key, key issues relevant to the audit. 
and they have um, a copy of the last year's management report, and it formally goes to mayor and council, and they just request that it be presented in the formality of a council meeting, for the acknowledgement that you received it for information purposes. And I just if there any questions on it. it sort of outlays their audit, um, their audit plan, talks about materiality, future PSAB things they may have to consider. It's all great stuff. Um, so the recommendation is to uh, receive the report. I'll ask for a motion and a second. Further discussion? Oh, that's pretty straightforward. Same thing we saw more or less exactly. last year. Um, exactly. So I'll call the question to receive the report. All in favor? Opposed? That carries. Thanks, Pam. Good. Got rid of a wadge of paperwork in one fell swoop. Okay, page 103. 103. <coughs> So uh, I'll speak to this since Nikki's not here. Uh, this is her report with respect to the uh, rock stack wall that we heard further information about from Mr. Kobasu and um, her presentation of, or her submission of this report is for <coughs> council's information to receive. Okay, uh, recommendations to receive the report. Uh, can I have a motion and a second? Moved and seconded. Uh, discussion? Uh, I'll point out that I wrote a, a rude word on this thing because I didn't think that it was a complete uh, um, uh, study, as just been exemplified by uh, a member of the public. Um, I, I would have to believe that that plan was, was documented, that there was a two-phase plan, that there was a rep repairs to the road, which was a, a block-stacked wall. Um, those of us that have been up there know and have seen the pictures. Uh, essentially, there were big blocks, about half meter by half meter by half meter blocks stuck, stacked on top of each other. It now makes a lot more sense to me that there was a phase two plan that involved rock vaulting and grouting. The fact that it didn't happen must have meant that it came to council. And as George just told us, it happened in 2010 or 11. I, mean, I don't remember what he said. I meant to ask him again. I didn't write it down. So I'm surprised that that information didn't come out of our document management system. Nonetheless, uh, the motion is only to uh, receive the report for information purposes. Uh, it's probably uh, led into a wider discussion. Obviously, we're trying to understand it is if there's any comeback uh, anywhere, whether on design engineers, uh, somebody presumably would have said what needed to be done and then got the contracted to start doing it. So I, I have a big problem with this report, but we're going to re only receive it right now. So I'll take uh, call the question. All in favor of receipt? And opposed? Who are you going to deal with it? Refer it to stop. Is this on your radar? So you're, it, do you want this as an action item? Um, I mean, we'd have to make a resolution on that one. The resolution was simply to... Things seem to go away. And yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll <coughs> tackle that under resolutions. Um, do we have to have specific resolutions under the resolution section? Or no, can we I, raise I would just suggest that if you'd like some further action taken with respect to this particular matter, that you resolve or make a motion to, to have staff follow up on the information provided this evening by Mr. Kovasu to see if we can uh, unearth that portion of the information to correct. And what will we actually find out from that? Uh, my it's not going to change the design. Is, is whether or not you wanted to know whether or not there were any options to recover uh, costs. Recover costs. So um, at the moment, you only have the fact that we weren't able to find anything, and then you have the information that Mr. Kovacs who presented tonight. So, um, That's so unrewarding. There's no real benefit other than, you know, this is an accountability piece. Somebody <coughs> knew about this. Now, those people are probably gone. Well, Everybody's a while gone. back. Yeah. Well, it's not that much of a while back, but it's long long before anybody hears time. Yeah. I suggest we, we leave it. Yeah. I think I think I have all the information I needed that I really wanted, uh, that it was a two-part project which didn't get done. Okay. The mayor was seen to gesture rudely and mutter under his breath. You can put that in the minutes. Okay. okay. Uh, we did. We did. We already received it. We, we were only trying to decide whether to do anything more about it, resolve any further action. But we're not even going to ask for a staff report or produce an action item. It's done. Okay. 
Um, we'll move on to item B, Mayor Standing Committee appointments. I've copied Council on the correspondence on this. I've discussed with the proponents uh, um, the, uh, the constitution of the Policy and Bylaw Review Committee, Standing Committee of Council, uh, which is under the Mayor's purview to establish. <coughs> it's going to change membership with current members' uh, um, acquiescence, say so, grateful relief, I don't know which, which it is, uh, to go to one resident member. Uh, that is Ian Mackey, one elected official that's myself and uh, staff observers. So, sorry, what? What staff committee? observers, that's you. Which committee are we talking about? Policy and Bylaw Review Committee. Oh, okay. So, just I'll give you my take on this is this is a standing committee. <coughs> staff should not be a member of You're the standing not, committee. Observe, I'm said. here as i be, be there as a as a staff resource for the committee. Um, to provide input and so forth, but uh, uh, so you two, only have two, 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 two people on the yeah. committee. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so quorum is one, right? In any event, or is, is there a minimum quorum of two? That's up to you. You're, you're establishing the terms. Well, of the, the terms of reference exist. Uh, I think it's, uh, I think it's half plus one, which makes two. I don't have the terms of reference. I'm pretty oh, sure. No, I don't have that with me. Anyway. Uh, Clearly, one cannot be quorum because it's not more than one. Yeah. It's not no, more than it's half. It's going to have to be two. Yeah, it's going to have to be two, which is fine. Now, the current terms of reference of all of our committees stipulate consensus, <coughs> not vote. Mm -hmm. They also, in all cases, stipulate membership of staff. So if we're going to get a housekeeping <coughs> right, th that was advised by previous advisors, um, that staff needed to be members. Mm. It's always new information. <laughs> always something new out of Africa. Okay, so but we'll we'll do the housekeeping and all that stuff later. Okay. So um, do I need to? I have so advised council. You have. Yeah. Okay. Everybody got it. I see nothing under council, and I see nothing further under committees. Although Fred, I don't know if you would like to address any IC matters. Shall I just say we're waiting and waiting and waiting? the IMP? Mm -hmm. um, the, the, uh, the contractual issues around that are obviously staff purview. Uh, I would suggest that um, at some point council may want to you know, discuss the level of, of pushback that we give these guys. Um, I cannot conceive that a major engineering firm would provide us a project manager, um, and you can put this in the minutes if you want, uh, that, that doesn't have the ability to work in the country, if, if that's the understanding, which I believe it is. Um, the other thing is, uh, it, you know, if, if it comes to it, we could have a level at a, a political discussion level, you know, mm -hmm. mayor to um, managing partner. Mm -hmm. But frankly, this is uh, unacceptable now. We have no idea what we've got. We spent a good portion of our treasure on it. Uh, it's germane to every discussion that we're having, as we just saw in our budget discussion. We don't know what our budget needs to be because we haven't seen the final report. Uh, Nikki seems to have had some sort of sneak preview, but I, I doubt that it's in any level of detail. Thanks for saying that, Fred. <laughs> Anybody else? Helen, parking plan committee? Um, nothing. When's the next meeting? 25th. And out of that will come? Um, we will have a final analysis on the survey. We will put forward some initial recommendations. I think those were the two main points. Yeah, that's right. Everybody will get five minutes to say their piece uh, on what, where they see the concept of the plan. Tell us about the survey, the, re the, the response. Well, um, I think we received <coughs> close to 300 response. That's pretty good. Um, in general, people seem to be actually quite happy with the um, parking situation. That's how I took it. Although there were a few that was unhappy with anything to do with parking. So, um, what was uh, enlightening was the comments. So not only did people complete the survey ticking off the various points, we received over 300 individual comments. So now the task is to compile them and analyze them and put them in some order that, that we can actually use it for the plan. Yeah, try and, try and digest them into some sort yeah. of uh, consensus word. It's quite... I've read every single one of them. They're very interesting. I mean, I would say that the, that the theme that, that 
if, there's a, if there are problems, it's abuse of the decal system. Um, people, people borrow, uh, take, are given decals. People who don't even live mm -hmm. in Lions Bay. Um, there's several things that, that will be specifically called out in the parking plan. The parking plan is, for the first time, I think, we will have a phase. It's not all going to happen in the first year. A phased approach to address our real issues, which is overcrowding at the beach. Uh, the problem that uh, Mr. Vlad mentioned about people blocking his driveway because he happens to live close to the beach, so on and so forth. I think so, in general we, we, as a whole, have a good understanding of what the problems are, but the survey will actually get, provide us with um, a list of priorities which, which should rank first for us to... I think it's absolutely Sorry. refreshing to have that many responses and good comments. Uh, you know, that, that's just unprecedented yeah. in the annals of survey taking. A uh, 50% right. response, yeah. that's unheard of. When are you hoping to come forward with the full recommendations? End of Feb? Yeah. Great. Yeah, so I think the report is due the end of Feb, uh, and then we'll be in the package for the first council meeting of March, uh, and will be a recommendation. Yep, so mm -hmm. for the last, I think we've had six to eight meetings so far, and all we've done is to analyze the current s s environment, the situation. Mm -hmm. So we're just taking um, inventory of the parking situation as it is, and we have not, e we have been, until the 25th, we haven't started um, looking for solutions yet. So I think, you know, we're, we're really looking at, at it from a high level. Yeah, Helen's run a very tight ship. She, she hasn't allowed anybody to discuss plans yet. And on this, you're not going to, uh, well, like, who knows what you're going to do. Uh, is your intention to just provide recommendations based on your f findings? You're not going to do a 10-page report or something like that, are you? No, it's going to be, a, it's going to be longer than 10 pages. Okay. It'll, it'll be a, a report. A fairly detailed it'll, report, yeah. Okay. It'll be a report. Out of which will come multiple things, like... Okay. Whether to offer paid parking or not, whether to change the decal design to make it voidable or not, or uh, many, many things. So Can't one reason you're going to know everything there is to know about parking in Lions Bay. And then some. Uh, Thank you. About that. <laughs> um, now, nothing, no action items came out of those reports of committees, uh, and there's nothing, nothing written. Do we, do we move to receive the verbal reports? Because there's nothing in the minutes. No. Just I mean, if you had, if you had minuted, if. if like, I guess the recommendation or information report was, was the was the meeting so minute? It, it was. It oh, yeah. is. Yeah. So the minutes of the so the parking meeting should go into. They, they yeah. should they should be attached to this agenda. And I think you did actually forward some draft minutes, didn't you? We always have minutes. Mm -hmm. So would that be the same for all the other committees that all the minutes because yes. they don't we haven't done that before, we, but it's yeah. a great idea. Yes. I would, because I mean, I'm, yeah, otherwise we don't know what's happening with the other committees. It's other than this report. Two we purposes. try to get the IC meeting minutes into our message. Pardon? We try to get the IC meeting minutes uh, into the regular meeting, but uh, we haven't had an IC meeting for some time now due to our way to. Yeah, but as Peter says, they can be draft minutes too. They don't have to be approved. Okay. They're just, okay. just whatever. So, so we, we, in fact, the, the meeting that was cancelled for yesterday, um, there were minutes for that. Oh, I see what you mean, yeah. But then they weren't approved because the only difference is that they don't have to be approved. And the thing is, they give council a flavor of the meeting and what happens. Mm -hmm. It's just communication, okay. just open communication. Well, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's that purpose yeah. for the edification of council. Yeah. But it's also because this is a public council meeting and you've got your agenda, mm -hmm. you've got all those committee meeting minutes sitting there. If somebody wants to read, oh, what did the committee do? They, you well, know, that's it, also available in the committee minutes. Transparency and, and, and getting it out to the public so that they can see what your committees are doing. You have to know to go to council, calendar, and the date, that, and then you click on a little link in there, and then you'll get the minutes. The well, no, because they'll be attached to the agenda. So now, all you yeah. do is just open up the agenda and just go through it. No, what are these? Isn't that, isn't that a problem, though, for showing the draft minutes? No. They're just there for information. You're not approving them? The, the <coughs> job of approving those minutes is the job of the committee the next time it meets. Just open communication. So should we not just prove, put <coughs> in the approved no, minutes? Not necessarily. No. It's not approved. It's not well. The way the way I've always done it that with the committees that um, with the at the SLRD was uh, we never had or sometimes we did but um, generally speaking the the draft 
minutes of each committee, even though they'd been held a week or two prior to the to the board meeting, uh, were appended to the to the agenda of the of the board meeting. What if so something gets changed majorly? Then, if there, if there was something that was seriously <laughs> wrong, then I would think that the member of the committee who sits on council would probably point it out at the council meetings. It's like, oh, there's this, you know, this is here, but you know, I don't, I didn't see it this way, so we may come back to you on some corrections, but um, you know, fine tuning corrections is not a big deal. It's there for yeah. information, and unless the information is way wrong, then you know, it's serving a, a couple of good purposes for council and for the public. But uh, yeah, if it's way wrong. Then there's there's a problem with whoever took the minutes, <laughs> and and it's also you know there's an opportunity for the person sitting at this table to say, well, wait a minute, I there's some. some well, I mean that's the case in point now. So the infrastructure committee meeting minutes, um, I first said I was okay with them until I actually read the final section. Until I realized, uh oh, that's not at all what the discussion was or what the implication was. And so I sent uh, some corrections in. If those draft minutes had gotten in. It would need. It would have need. It was a subs It was to do with the delay in the delivery of the IMP. And essentially, the way that the minutes had been written was that the the infrastructure committee took the blame for the delay, which you know is uh, completely uh, not the case. Yeah, and, and that's a different discussion, perhaps, in terms of what committee meeting minutes should look like. So why? So why would we not put in the approved minutes versus the draft minutes? Uh, well, generally speaking, you might be waiting a while. Okay, you know? so that's, it's a, that's a timing. It's a timing thing. issue. Yeah, it's a timing issue. Okay. I mean, that's the pro that would be ideal. But mm. and if they're available, we'll put them in. But okay. if they're not, then especially if you're only meeting monthly, uh, you, you know, you, there's going to be two council meetings to every committee. Meeting. Yeah. Okay, good. Thanks. Uh, it's always good to get clarity on how we can sort of increase our. I think it's our fifth thing: good government. Moving on to the RCMP reports, um, do we move to receive these or we just, uh, there's not a staff report, how do you, how? I don't know what have you done previously, we've just said yeah it looks good, I would just receive them for, for information then, okay but we do a motion, yeah, yeah okay, mm -hmm. so uh, I didn't see anything here that was out of the ordinary in terms of the RCMP report, so, uh, motion to receive and a second for the discussion. Call the question all in favor, close carried. So that's received. And then the Lions Bay Fire Department monthly report. Um, motion to receive and a second. Uh, I'll point out here that, you know, I, I see that, that staff did follow on our request to say whether in Lions Bay or not, but it's just actually, you've got to be careful what you ask for because now I see that there's an MVA rescue required in Lions Bay, yes, but was that on the highway or not? So what we really needed to know was on highway, not on highway. Why? Because I'm trying to understand how much work our fire department does for the province. Boy, if this was all in the village, then uh, we got more problems with our roads than we know about. Well, precisely. <laughs> but it says yes, in village. So the question really was on highway, not on highway. I think. Yeah. Correct? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Because the highway we have no control over, no jurisdiction on, you can't even put up a sign that says slow down or else, uh, anything like that. So we need to know why, because you know this will be a discussion that we'll be having with the province at a certain point, saying, you know, we're providing you a service here, guys. So the action item that you see here, that's what the amendment was, and I amended it in the minutes as well. Okay? Uh, the rest is good. So, yeah, Fred, sorry. One comment I'm having and <coughs> one problem I have with it is um, the clarity of communication. And in these reports, they got Mesa C and D, and sometimes we get an A and a B. And uh, there's no explanation of what Mesa stands for. Like, I know it's a medical assist, but... Um, we did look it up once, remember? We even find, after three meetings, we got what the acronym was. Well, Does anybody actually, remember? Well, actually, I noticed in February 3rd <coughs> of last year, uh, oh, the the CAO of the day was going was tasked to find out what it all means. Uh, I've got no record of finding out what it was. I think it was reported verbally. No, but, yeah. Was it? Okay, because I couldn't find any written record of it. Let me just type it into the Google, internal Google, Peter. It didn't, didn't work. Nisa. 
<coughs> I typed it in. <coughs> I did an internet search on it, and I put Mesa D in, per, in quotation marks. You didn't find anything, did you? I did. Oh, you did? Because I, I didn't. I found the last my time. Fe February 3rd meeting. <laughs> <up the> <laughs> <laughs> they were requesting it. <laughs> you had the paramedic working for you. You didn't know what it meant. Well, that's it. You know, I, I, I spent 30 years in the business and everything, and we never used that term. And now it's come out of, I think it came out of the state somewhere, and after, you know, after 9-11, there's such a big swing in fire services to change everything to the American system. And after I think, the last three years, after hiring a paramedic, I learned about all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, but I think part of, part of what we're trying to do here is have clear uh, communication, and we need to remove the jargon. Um, acronyms go only so far. And I think if you want to be clear to the community where our fire department's going, they should say what it is. Not or you should have, if you use acronyms, have a... <laughs> The key. There's a script yeah. key inside it. That would, That's all, that would work. I'll just point out to anybody who cares to know, this is a great KPI. Absolutely, yeah. Um, to report to the village, to track yeah. our costs, to fight with the province in the future. This is, I mean, talk about a KPI. Yeah. Yeah. So I take. Made in heaven. What I just said. So a KPI, for everybody's information, is key. <laughs> <laughs> What's an MBA? What's Hydro? Yes. And why do we call it hydro? We don't really know what hydro is. Do we mean electricity? <coughs> okay. Is it still hydro? Good. It's, it's, uh, it's getting lighthearted in the uh, council meeting tonight. Okay, good. So, uh, is motion on the table and second to receive. All in favor? Thanks. And opposed? There's none that carries. Unanimously. And the next item on the agenda is uh, resolutions. Page 109 is the first, and this is to give the keys to the car to Peter de Jong. Not much of a car. I disagree. <laughs> I think it's a heck of a car. Yeah, there you go. It's a Jeep <laughs> mixed with a Lamborghini. I put forward the motion on all counts. Thank you. And a second? Discussion? I have just one question, Peter. Do we need to rescind any appointments that are that are motions of council, or do they just fall by the wayside for previous signatories? I've never seen a rescission unless I think they're just going to fall off. I mean, you, you know, bank signatories are the important one. I guess when you go and do the new signatory, the old one gets torn up, right? Well, they don't exist because they're not our employees. They're, they're not with us anymore. So I, I doubt that there needs to be any rescissions. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. You I'm happy with that? With it. Okay, motions on the table. Police force. <laughs> is this all that we can make you do? Is it, weren't there one or two more that were required? I seem to remember. No, definitely. Bylaw officer. Oh, he is a bylaw officer. That's good. Yeah. Have you taken the bylaw enforcement course? No. <laughs> That's too bad. Okay, call the question. All in favor? Opposed? Thanks. Congratulations, Peter. You will be sorry. Mm -hmm. And the second is the acting mayor schedule on page 111. Uh, you will recall that last year we <coughs> had to do something special because we forgot the period December 2nd through December 31st, 2014. Mm -hmm. That period is now gone, so it's academic. Now we are talking just going to a pure calendar quarter rather than doing it on the, on the second of, the, of that month's anniversary. The thing to catch up on us is in 2018, where it's going to be short for the end of the year. I, I would suggest that Helen will just miss the final part of December. Unless you want to prorate it in 2018. <coughs> we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Um, well, we are discussing it now, even though I haven't asked for a motion. Did we not want to make this until 2018, was my question. So we don't have to keep doing this. Why, why do we need to do this every year? We don't, if we all agree with it. I don't see why you would... Yeah, you could, I suppose. So, I mean, I would suggest that we amend the recommendation that the following schedule for the Office of Acting Mayor, uh, in the event the mayor is uh, absent for the remainder of, of term. council's term, although council is a continuing body, so that's not strictly right. It's, it's the 2014-2018 council, I hope it, it gets said. Well, but you're just setting it for 2016, 17, and, and part 18. of 18. Part yeah, of 18. part of 18 until the new council is inaugurated, sometime at the beginning of December. 
Actually, I think it's a month earlier in 18. Is it? Okay. You've already checked? Well, that's what it is. <laughs> I'm not for good behavior. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's counting the days. <laughs> Doing? Yeah. Okay, so uh, as amended, can I ask for a motion and a second for the discussion? So just so everybody's sure, we, we are setting the acting mayor schedule through the remainder of our term. Our term. Okay, yeah. good. Call the question. All in favor? Opposed? Okay. Great stuff, <coughs> man. Okay, on to number 10, bylaws. The OCP plan amendment bylaw number 493 adoption. That's on page 113. You all know what this is about, and we've seen it ad infinitum. Uh, I will ask for a motion in a second, please. Sorry. Just one sec. Oh, please, no, I can't take this for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just going to address um, the comment that um, Ruth signed. Do you want to do that before the motion or after? Sure, no, no put let's it, do put it. it. No, put it on the table. It should be motion, second, yeah, open we'll... it to discussion. So, motion. Uh, Fred. You are going to open the discussion because you moved it. And a second. Thanks. Okay. Fred. What am I discussing? <laughs> I don't know. You can defer to the CAO. <laughs> defer to Peter. Okay. Uh, as uh, Ms. Simon noted, the uh, there was an amendment to this bylaw. So what we should be looking at here, the way this should be set out, is is the uh, bylaw number 408, 2008, comma, as amended. Um, so wherever the bylaw is is referenced by its full and proper name, it should say "comma as amended." Um, so there's one, two, three spots where that should take place, and then uh, you're incorporating the changes that took place in 2010, which which I was aware of in looking at the bylaw. On do we, are we ASA. able to do this uh, at adoption time, or do we have to go through first, second, and third again? Ooh, we're adopting, aren't we? Mm -hmm. Yes, we are. Yeah. I think this is going to be the bylaw that never goes away. <laughs> and, and I can also tell you, in every Metro board meeting, I get close to booed because Lions Bay is the only holder. It's more like jeered, not booed. Yeah, you have to rescind third and move the amendments um, past third as amended. To be honest, I prefer to do that because I don't want to go willy-nilly at this and just think that this as amended will do the trick. Mm -hmm. There may be some changes in the bylaw that we brought to our attention that need to be... I, I, that yeah, talk I to the RCS. Mm. Can't we just join a different regional district? <laughs> <laughs> be much easier. So this is tabled? No, no, no we're going to have to rescind third reading. And, and, and amend it by adding as amended. <coughs> And uh, yeah, in terms of, of whether there's anything else that needs to be got to do it by the book, otherwise it's not valid. So, Fred, uh, there's a motion <coughs> on the table. Anything? I mean, obviously, it's, there's things missing from the way it's mm. formatted, okay? But other than that, as far as the content is, is concerned, everybody's satisfied with it. It's done. You remember that, that we made a small mistake. We dropped the employment figures. So yeah. we had to rescind the third reading to go back to put the response. Is there not something that we could do to bypass that, go back to third reading and do all that kind of stuff again? Do we, is, it just, is this just a formatting thing? Or is it, does it have to be exact? Uh, I, I, what, what you need to do at this point is, in order to incorporate the amendment that took place in 2010, you need to amend the wording of this so that it picks that up by saying, as amended. Now, whether or not the bylaw, the amendment bylaw in 2010, included things that haven't been taken into account in the RCS in the RCS yeah. I'm not sure yeah. because yeah I just I don't just know. don't want to open up a Pandora's box of things and all of a sudden yeah. let's not forget that this is somewhat academic in that we are almost certainly going to be looking at a new OCP yeah. in which will be a new RCS uh, this year but let's get this to them as soon as we can but um, yeah, well I'm tired of being jeered some point, of those guys are fairly scary yeah, so we're going to have to rescind third, amend by adding as amended. Can we do that third reading now? You can do that now. Yeah, you can make those two, and two then adopt next. motions. Yeah. And, then, and then hopefully adopt next time unless in the interim we discover that there are things in that 2010 you'll know that, that we that. have to incorporate. Okay, so the motion on the table right now is to adopt the, um, the amendment. Uh, we do not want to do that. How do we handle that motion? Do we table the motion or do we rescind the motion? What do we do? 
Uh, I think it would be preferable to rescind that motion. Okay, so um, do we have to take, do we need a motion to rescind? It's on the floor, so somebody should motion that the... Uh, or we just vote it down. That the motion, well, you can do that, that's, that's even easier. It's even easier. Okay, so all in favor? And no, you're not no. in favor. Oh, do you want to be in favor? Because you don't right. put your no. hand up, Fred. Oh, it must be my ear. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay, all opposed? All. All of you? Presumably? Hands. Hands. Yes. Unanimously okay. opposed. Yes. It's, a, it's a first. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So okay, that's, so that's the motion is with. defeated. Mm -hmm. I will make a new motion um, to uh, rescind third reading on the, what is it, Peter? Official Community Plan Amendment Bylaw of 2015, Bylaw Number 493. Uh, motion on the table can have a second. Thanks. Uh, discussion. Seeing none, I'll call the question. All in favour? Opposed? Carried. So third readings um, rescinded. rescinded. Now we're going to do third reading by adding the terms as amended in appropriate places as advised by CAO uh, PDJ for the third reading. We can do that on third reading, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, you can, you can make yep. changes on third reading. Yeah. Do you want to catch up or are you good to go? No, I'm good. You good? Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's just formatting, but there's a couple mistakes in this print out here. I did notice there was no superscript. I wasn't going to. 118 and 119. Yeah. Um, and 120. It's it's all all the uh, all the footers references in the text didn't get superscripted. Yeah, the footnote for uh, page 120 came through okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I, yeah. I mean, we can. It's a formatting thing that doesn't need. Uh, Can we talk about the footnotes. One, two, yeah, but if you look at the one mm -hmm. in here somewhere, it's just text. I don't know where it is now, but it's not superscripted. Just under municipally owned assets, including public safety building one. Yeah. Oh, I see. It's not raised. Yeah. Oh. And they're all like that. Oh, I just thought the first two were like that. Oh, really? Yeah. You saw some that were actually raised? Yeah, the third one over the page. Under employment, it's got three channel superscript three, and that works fine. I think you can fix that, Peter. Mm -hmm. If you look at, I mean, simply just look at all the footnotes. I think we identified that once before. It didn't seem to happen. I was not going to mess with it. Okay. Okay. Again. This is very much a placeholder workaround statement pending our, our real <coughs> regional context statement, which will be properly done, meaty, public input, all, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, so third reading uh, as moved. Uh, can I have a second? And further discussion? I'll call the question all in favor of third reading as amended and opposed? That carries. <sighs> okay. This thing's got a life of its own. Um, so you will bring it for adoption next meeting, unless you find major issues, in which case we'll rescind the third reading for, I think, the fourth time. That's good. Maybe we should go for a record. Let's just do it a few more random times. Good stuff. Okay, thanks. There we guys. Yeah, it's just... I know I said I saved us $25,000 by writing this ourselves, but man, <laughs> look at the cost. <laughs> okay. And on to the next. Fees and charges bylaw 497, verbal update from you, Peter. Right. So I started to go through this and um, quickly realized that um, I, I need to get a better handle on, on what's been done in the past because there are things in the, the way that this is drafted. Uh, firstly, um, these bylaws are not referred to as fees and charges bylaws anymore. Uh, they're just fees bylaws so as not to um, confuse charges that may be placed on title for other, other sections of the Act. Uh, so it should just be called the fees, fees bylaw. Um, yeah, but more importantly, um, you know, well, the second thing I noticed, though, was uh, in terms of uh, the, by the the citation for the bylaw, I think, said uh, 
prior to my amendment here, said municipality of the village of Lions Bay. You should always use your corporate name. The corporate name is Village of Lions Bay. It's not municipality of Village of Lions Bay. It's just Village of Lions Bay. So um, that that's something I would change. But the the crux of the matter is that under Section Four, we've got four point one. So Section Four is called repeal. Four point one fees and charges by law number four six two four eight zero and four ninety are hereby repealed. So this bylaw will repeal those bylaws. 4.2 says repeal of prior fees and charges 2014 bylaw number 465 is hereby repealed. So this is attempting to repeal a repeal. You can't repeal a repeal. Um, so I don't know what that's, that's a, but more importantly what follows is consequential amendments. The following bylaws are hereby amended. So it's got a list. So for example, water bylaw number two is amended by deleting the connection charges section of Schedule A and amending Section 4 to read as follows. Fees and charges for services that may be or are provided under this agreement shall be payable as set out in the municipality of the village of Lions Bay fees and charges bylaw number 462. So it's basically saying that the water bylaw is going to be amended by changing it to read what's in bylaw 462. But we just repealed bylaw 462 up above so that's not going to work and that's what happens in every single one of these so I, I just I need a bit more time to sort of review the structure of, of, of what has you know where these fees are all I, obviously the, the idea is to try and collect them all in one place so I understand that objective but you don't want to miss anything in doing so you don't want to accidentally um, amend something that's repealed or you know so it, it just I need a bit of time to to bring this back, <coughs> and it's it's high priority because we need to be able to charge these fees. So uh, the basis on which we ch can charge fees today is the old bylaw, or to be the currently existing bylaw that is, hasn't. Is it that we've one? got four six two four eight zero and four nine four nine zero. So that how far did this one get through the process? Third reading. This is uh, I think it was only second reading. We held third reading until yeah. Peter started. Oh, that's right, and what's in here, because yeah. we wanted to check, because yeah. we thought we may be getting ahead of ourselves. Okay, so, so we're pretty clever. So I'll come back with, uh, with something that's, that I can recommend to you. Good. Anything shorter than the uh, OCP amendment to be great? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I don't Yeah, this year, preferably. <laughs> 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 Okay, good. So, uh, motion to receive that report. That's the report, right? The verbal mm -hmm. report, yeah. Yeah. Um, and second, uh, call the question. All in favor, opposed. Seeing none, carries. Okay. You enjoy this sort of thing, don't you? On a full stomach, sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the case tonight. Okay, correspondence. <laughs> we will start on page 127, and Ron will do the duty. Uh, thank you, Carl. I don't think it be as robust as I normally am. I feel a little <laughs> fatigued, and especially all the government stuff is a little on the tedious side. Number one, UBCM year review. Uh, this is a five-year review of the RCMP police service agreements. It's for populations over five thousand dollars, over five thousand people, which we are not. Do you think? Do you understand if there's any ask there? I couldn't see an ask. Uh, the ask is please provide your feedback, which actually I think you provide your feedback to but better sources. I go straight to so the Minister of I Justice. Think yes. We're done on that one. Yeah. Number two, update on Syrian refugee settlement plans. Uh, Can I, in light of Ruth's uh, uh, presentation, what do we want to say here? Uh, so the deal, so her asks, which I did write it down, were once we get the past the four tables and the financial gift. Uh, she was uh, looking for um, us to say something to the government that we were, we the village were supporting a family and doing stuff, which, looking through the many many pages, is not what they're asking to do. No. So basically, this is kind of a big PR thing, and uh, I don't believe there's a response necessary. Not to this. I I would suggest that I will just, in the course of my discussions with uh, with our MP and with our MLA, I will say that we 
not we, it's certainly not official, it's the residents of Lions Bay are going through a fairly uh, extensive <coughs> fundraiser to support a family. What's the amount of money needed? 40,000. 35 or 40, something like that. Yeah. So I'll, I'll just tell them in conversation, no more than that, I think, right? Everybody good with that? Okay. Uh, next one is the uh, speeding in Lions Bay, dear to your own heart. Okay, now I will ask about this one, Peter. Um, the letter was dated December 16th, was received, 153. Uh, 153, was received by our uh, admin function on December 29th, 13 days later. This was the first I'd seen it, ever. It's addressed to me. came by a hard copy mail. If it comes by hard copy, it does not come by email. This is something that if staff doesn't know, they will know now. I, I am in direct correspondence with Susan Anton, the Attorney General and Minister of Justice, on this very matter. And I haven't responded for a month, so that's not cool. So the ask has always been, and for a while it did happen, when these things come in, they get sent on directly, immediately. Mm -hmm. But it got processed 13 days after it was sent. I can't imagine it came much later than the 20th. Well, I, yeah, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't assume, because I did see something, I can't remember what it was, but... Uh, it had a date at the beginning of the month, and it was something that um, that w I think it, I think you received it, and you asked me, "Oh, did we get this previously?" And I looked, and it was we got gotten it via email from the ministry the day before. So well, that's in so here as well. Are, so we'll talk to that known, when it comes. They are known yeah. to you know. I wouldn't go by the, the date that's yeah. on the letter. Fair enough. I, I'm not suggesting that we have a, a, a mail handling problem, but I really would have liked to see this on December 29th because it was certainly we got it then. Just as a, as as uh, catalyzed by this letter, uh, what I'm trying to do with the Minister of Justice is not what they suggest here. They're trying to see if we want to add to our community policing charge. No, we do not. What I want is for them to approve a very specific case of a return to speed cameras on safety grounds. The first and, and test case being right outside Lions Bay to try and get people to slow down. What if, what would be the circumstances around if we did, what would be the benefit of increasing our policing costs? By I, I mean, because if, you know, if we had our own police person yeah. sitting in our flat building where yeah. they used to sit, yeah. they would do up, they'd be in Lions Bay. What's the cost of that? It's not out of the question, and I discussed with the guy when I went to the last big RCMP collective uh, in, in, in Burnaby, at the lake there, um, where essentially the last time they were there, uh, the big city mayors had asked about these assault rifles that were being issued to the RCMP, because they were worried about them going through buildings and killing ten people. So they bought three, and they passed the assault rifles around the desk, so all these mayors are sort of holding this event. No ammunition. Um, yeah, so, yeah. Police guy. Anyway, so the point is, so that's the forum where I discussed, I happened to sit next to the, the deputy minister, and he said, well, you just, you pay community police and you talk to, talk to me, in fact. So uh, that was just before Christmas, I haven't done it, and I don't have any guidance from council yet, but to answer your question, I don't know what it would cost, well, but, figures, yeah. it, uh, well, we currently pay, our, our current policing levy is $112,000, mm -hmm. or it was last year. That's not a lot for what we get, I suppose, you know, we get, but we actually get dinged for a lot of highway stuff, hence my need to understand what's on the highway and what's in the village. So, like, there, there may be a trade-off. I, I don't know what the cost is, I'm just saying that there's something, there's something to consider. Mm -hmm. Yes, there is, and, you know, if we had a permanent police presence, they would write the tickets on our bylaw yeah. book, okay. not just on the provincial bylaw book, yeah. but so provincial... There may be a, whether there's an advantage or not, I don't know. But the thing is that it's, it's come up in conversations around the village before. Mm -hmm. So it's just it's a point to think about. So, you know, I'm doing it at a fairly high level, which is why it would have been nice to receive this letter when it came. Okay. Um, same for the next letter, which was, uh, which was mailed on December 21, according to the letter. It was also received on December 29th. Maybe we only process mail once a, once a month. I don't know. But I would have liked to receive this then. It's very, very important uh, because of the LNG stuff coming up. Sorry, yeah. I've, I've superseded. Uh, That's okay, I've you've uh, you've vented, you're still alive here, so we'll, you've dealt with the, you will deal with the spill response, so there we go. 
I mean, they have, they've encouraged uh, us to provide comments, uh, but I mean, basically the report's going to be out here in mid-January, so it's almost here now, so we're too late for that. Exactly. Oh, so there we go. Exactly. Just for information on that one, <clears throat> uh, for a land-based spill and everything, uh, there's a, a so the gentleman's agreement with the city of North Van who will come out and do our hazmat responses. They're fully equipped. They deal with the whole North Shore and that's the highway and everything. And they did quite recently yeah. when, when somebody decided to fill his bilge with gasoline rather than his gas tank mm. down, down the marina. Um, yeah. Uh, I'll take the next one as well, Ron, on page 156. Okay. Same deal. This one was, was dated December 18th. It was received five days earlier than the one that was mailed December 21st. Okay, that's understandable. This one is important to us because we are talking with uh, village benefactors for earlier childcare facility uh, where we are looking to uh, um, induce a, a substantial <coughs> donation, uh, that is in the six figures, Jim, um, to, to, cons to, to help build the complete community. Again, I think as a general rule, if it comes in in hard copy, it does not come in email, almost, almost always. I'll take the next one as well, Ron, because this came to me in hard copy. It was addressed yeah. to me. It was in my mail slot. Um, my mail is much more efficient than anybody else's. I then gave it to Peter to ask for his recommendations. What do we do? So, Peter, what do we do? Oh, I don't remember you asking that. Sorry. I, I saw it came back to me. I don't want it. I think this is the one that uh, had the date of January 4th on it and that we only received the day before. And they never did send it, well maybe they did send it to me by email to be honest. Yeah, but via email is like... Yeah, I gave you the hard copy they sent me, which is... Yeah, and then I noticed yeah. that, that, the, that the email had come in the day before, which was, you know, just the beginning, uh, beginning of this week. So... Um, well, here's the hard copy. With my note to Peter. If anybody wants it, they can have it. Okay, you don't have, if you don't know yet today, don't fuss about it. But I, th I think there's a few asks in there. I, th I believe that we are required to comment. Uh, you're not required to comment. You're invited to comment. Is that what it is? Okay. Yeah. So I don't know much about the regional metro food plan, um, food system action plan. So uh, whether that's something that you're familiar with or uh, have thoughts about, um, it's not something that, that I'm familiar with or, or have any recommendations to make. Sorry. It's not any committee that I serve on. Uh, it's the regional planning committee. It's. I'd suggest we do nothing. Well, we could offer our, our residents contributions just that we all live on a hillside, not using agricultural land for housing. That's in the original context statement. See, we're doing see, that. they know it. They shouldn't have sent this to us if they'd read our original context statement that they're insisting on. Okay, good. So that's it, and I will now return to Ron's tender mercies. On seven, the cannabis inquiry. This uh, was uh, sent to us uh, by a corporation. Uh, no, I think you missed one. What page are you on? on 205. You did the regional. No, you're right. <coughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Cannabis, uh, a popular topic at this time of night. Uh, long story <laughs> short, this is a non resident asking us to answer some questions. I suggest we not. Okay, so can I just. Uh, they, they asked us questions. Uh, what's council's direction here? Ignore? I'm going to ignore it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fine. Okay. Uh, the next one, which is an emergency program okay. act consultation. Uh, personal letter, of course, from the uh, Minister of State. And uh, this is the legislative framework for emergency management of British Columbia. The whole gloss <coughs> is all here. Consulting process is January 11th to February the 19th. Um, Looks like they're doing all the uh, heavy horsepower stuff here. I actually don't know that we would weigh in with anything on a global scale other than our own little village, which is rather self-interest. Mm -hmm. There are some interesting things that come out of it. For example, the Clean Up the Act. Um, it, for a long time, it, it used to, well, it used to be called the Provincial Emergency Program, but now it's the Emergency Management Act. Uh, hence, we we no longer use PEP. We have our PEP numbers. We have task numbers for the emergency programs. How recent is that? Yeah, they took that out in uh, 
Oh, wait, oh, nine, oh, we still call them the oh. fire department. We still call them the fire department. It's long dead. But, uh, <clears throat> uh, no, most of the stuff in here I went over, it, and uh, I think the changes are, are really good. Um, some of the later ones, uh, like discussion six, um, felt a little uncomfortable with it, with the, uh, the one that gave the province the authority to enact an emergency plan over and above the village's concerns. I don't know if we want to give away our sovereignty that easily. Um, might be all right, might not. It all depends on who's doing it. Uh, and again, number seven, um, about private sector non-government agencies, or NGOs as they call them, uh, coming in. Um, again, there's sort of a hint of uh, a lot of provincial government control over stuff that could be local government responsibility. I think the intent was if the local government's being negligent, the provincial government can step in. I get that. But, um, I always feel nervous about giving up too much of our own side. Well, I mean, it's not only negligence, it's unable to, oh. to act, given budget so, realities, yeah, given the discussion we just yeah, had. Yeah, I mean, it's the province is the one that's cutting the checks, so I think they want to say, recommend to the left hand, from the left hand but to the right hand, yes, we should do this, and yeah, well, there's, there's our power to do it. it. The thing is, given the fact that we have a major waterway and a major rail line running by our door and a major highway, you know, if there's going to be an emergency management situation come up, you know, it likely could. It could. It could involve the village, or it could involve something. And especially since we respond to a lot of stuff on the highway already, you know, um, there may be a benefit to us participating per se. You know, as a partner, that that would be my look at it. I don't know what that means until I read the entire document. But that's what I saw when the first time I looked at it. Yeah, that's typically how it works with the MDC, the yeah. Emergency Management BC, is that uh, you call them up for their <clears throat> for their assistance and they will help you as a higher level helping you out. You know, it will almost always require you to ask them. Whereas some of the wording in here, I'm kind of wondering whether there's an imposed uh, well. position on the government. Um, it's just that it's something I just feel like you want to be careful with. But Might be something we want to ask questions yeah. about. Yeah, but they've always been good with us, very good with us. So we don't <coughs> really have any cause to be too concerned. But careful. Yeah, well, so, I mean, you know, what is our... I, see, they are asking for comments, if any, before February 19th. Um, I'm I mean, more interested to know how we absorb this information into our future planning. Well, the, 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 they're talking about... about um, the ability to prepare emergency plans. Okay, so they're saying there's a what there's, I think they're saying here is that there's, there's probably a standard or a, a format that, that should be followed throughout, throughout, and that you know wh wh when I I look between the lines here, I say it's possible that there's there may be some help issue to help with emergency planning and the, you know, you know if we have an emergency plan in the village, these guys could look at it and say, you know what's what. Yeah, I mean, you know, this is probably all pretty meaty stuff if we had the capacity to absorb any more information. But um, they have got a picture of Lions Bay on the back. <laughs> Very clever. I hope. Right. No. Yeah. Um, so, Peter, what do we do with this? I mean, this is potentially great stuff. Uh, I guess you have to read it all and keep it open in your head to know how it fits in with the rest of our plans. Yeah, uh, there's, there's some, uh, there's some uh, learning up I need to do with respect to emergency management. Um, I have uh, had a brief conversation with the emergency program manager from the SLRD who called me uh, last week to uh, invite me to enter into discussions for mutual aid for the fire department in Virginia Beach um, to have a formal agreement. This sort of a handshake thing going on right now, but we should formalize that and make sure that all the I's are dotted and T's are crossed. Um, and at the same time, I asked him about some of these other kinds of things, not this specifically, but um, I said, you know, we just had a, an emergency plan created. I haven't had the time to read it yet, um, and we probably need some training and uh, that kind of thing, and he said, well, there's there's all kinds, I said, we probably can't afford all the J.I. stuff, so he said, well, there's all kinds of free stuff, you know, I'll, I'll put you in touch with a couple of people and um, so forth, so I'm looking forward to pursuing some of that 
conversation and uh, introductions and getting to know some of the people involved and having a better understanding of, of um, what, what things are available to us, how we can, you know, if there's things that we should contribute. I'll get his take on this for one thing. Uh, he's, um, he's well respected in the community and well known in the NBC and uh, Ryan Wainwright is his name. I don't know if you've ever heard of him, Fred. But, uh, in any event, yeah, it's it's an area that um, that I'll, I'll need to learn more about and be able to advise council where where appropriate. So. Well, just piggybacking on that, I've been having conversations with uh, Alexis Craig from um, uh, Squamish. Uh, she's their emergency coordinator up okay. there, and uh, I've, just in the conversation, we've been invited to sit in on their uh, some of the um, emergency a quarterly emergency planning meetings. Okay. Um, thought maybe pick their brains, find out what's going on. Would it help if I asked if you could be included? Yeah, if I can, you know, if I can make it to a meeting like that. And, uh, okay. Uh, yeah, sure. Okay. For sure. Keep me in the loop. <coughs> sure. Okay. Yeah, I mean, as a general sort of strategy, I think that we need to be looking outside our own regional district for, for sort of pan-regional issues of importance, and given the fact that how sound is the thing that's driving, the highway is driving, the mountain, and those all transcend and don't care about regional district boundaries. So it behooves us to be somewhat involved and understand what other regional districts are doing. Not to mention uh, Sunshine Coast Regional District, uh, you know, which is a ferry destination that goes right past us, all these things. I mean, I find the regional district boundaries uh, sort of an antiquated concept that, that worked back in some administrative uh, heyday, but not anymore. So I fully support us uh, doing as much going out of our way to spend time uh, with Squamish and Whistler and Pemberton and... and Fraser Valley and and you name it, because these the concerns that we're dealing with, like clean air, for example, it far supersedes the GVRD. You know, the air crosses the boundary. Uh, you know, like the pulp mill out here. Okay, uh, good. Thanks. Um, uh, last two items are yep. from uh, residents. Uh, number one. No, uh, there's the UBCM convention oh, program. Oh, sorry, missed that. Sorry, two, three, three, three. Regrets, but I'll be in Hawaii between September 26 and October. Pam wants to go to UBCM. Uh, and that's in Victoria, and so basically the agenda is on here along with their uh, suggested mode of uh, accommodation. So, Pam, what were you going to say? I was just going to ask. <clears throat> At this time, who's interested in going, just so we can make sure we have enough money in the budget? Last year, Mayor Burr was the only attendee. I would suggest that that's all that needs to take place, and I suggest I don't need to go to this one. I mean, what it was very useful to me uh, for was meeting with the, with the ministry people. Um, I had some very substantive discussion with our MLA. The rest of it, I could have done without. Okay. Uh, Peter? Uh, my thought was that there may be... Um, you know, as time goes by, there may be, there may be things that, um, meetings that you may want to request to mm. speak with various ministers and or the MLA and that that's uh, an opportunity for you as a council to put a bug in a few people's ears about things that are pressing concerns for Lions Bay. Uh, not necessarily long-term things, but, uh, you know, depending on what we see come out of the IMP, and other pressing concerns, uh, you may very well have some, some things that you might want to talk to a minister or two or an MLA about. Um, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't, um, I'm not, I'm not rejecting that. it. It's very expensive. Uh, uh, remind us, Pam, when the fee um, is 700, I think, right? Yeah, I mean, I think you have enough to, in the current budget to cover some attendance. I know, um, the previous, um, the interim. Uh, and yet, to have a lot of experience with this, and she said it's a wonderful form. Um, smaller municipalities heard really what Peter was saying that it's your opportunity to get um, for small. It's actually better for small municipalities. Actually, yeah. Well, I mean, I you know we certainly managed to hit above our weight when I went. Uh, you know, attending the plenary session where they resolving resolutions that nobody pays attention to. It's all very interesting and stuff, and the debate's really funny and great, but. What are the meetings that you can arrange ahead of time to meet with? Uh, I think that, I mean, I'm mm -hmm. being myself, mm -hmm. I would go if I knew that I had issues and people to meet and talk to, and I was actually driving something for the Village of Lions Bay, not just solely on my own, but issues from Count Floor from people and people to talk to, I would do that. That would be fine. That would be very interesting. I go by myself, on my own, just 
just without, not without the support, but without information or without you know issues to drive, that would be there would be no point. I mean, I certainly made it very clear that I was speaking on behalf of, of the Council of Lions Bay. It was not uh, you know it was, it was I had I took out MLA with me every time to, as a witness. You know, for fifteen hundred bucks for you to meet with two ministers. That's good dough spent. Well, yeah. could we not get the same meeting by me going to Victoria if we really needed to and asking for a 15-minute meeting? Yeah, sometimes those can be harder to get, but sometimes mm. those can be more productive because you've got their undivided attention. But um, I guess, um, yeah, whether or not there's, there's corollary benefits of, of uh, speaking with, you know, like-minded smaller municipalities when you're there and seeing seeing what they're doing and, and talking about some of the issues that are germane to you or probably germane to them and um, whether or not you can you can form some alliances and get some, you know, by banding together, maybe you've got a stronger voice yeah. when you're talking to but the minister. But there's opportunities for that. Isn't there the small community forum or whatever that we we go to? The house sound forum? No, no, no. The, um, L LGMA thing? I don't know what it is. There's, we went to two small community. Yeah, local government leadership yeah. academy, yeah. small communities versus regional districts versus mm -hmm. whatever. You know what? I just uh, think that yeah. if, it's, if the money's to be spent, it's got to be spent wisely. And if there's issues to drive it, we should do it. I think it's great. And, you know, I would participate. I don't know about anybody else, but I certainly would. Well, maybe, Pam, uh, it's a good point. Uh, maybe this needs to be included in the amount that is allocated to the council discretionary budget. Or I'm, I, let's just do the 1500 bucks and figure out whether we want to go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which, yeah. And I'll just say, like, there's sufficient in our views to cover at least a couple of years. So yeah. I was more yeah. just wondering if anyone, sometimes no, entire no. councils go, and I just wanted to make sure that wasn't the plan, mm -hmm. so I can get in the budget. That way, should you not go, there'll be a room for your uh, entertainment budget. Okay, move on. <laughs> uh, i where it's going. There you go. Uh, <laughs> for non-alcoholic beverages. Oh no! I was talking about a TV screen behind me. Oh, no, no, no! So I, I didn't have to move every time we shone the projector. Press the flesh. Okay, the last two are Lions Bay resident issues. One, uh, parking committee undoubtedly got this one who uh, is not happy with the survey. And you got that right. And has, zero, to her. and has personally zeroed in on all of our problems, and I don't believe a response is necessary. I've responded already. Okay, and good. And the second one is a municipal grant from one of our, our coffee groups. council on that because I it's did. two council from one did of our did. groups, and I substantially, I they are asking for early interim funding of their ask, which puts this into the staff's bailiwick to come forward with this exceptional recommendation. So I would defer this one back to staff to zero in it on the thing. Um, given that processing of applications may take considerable time, we would greatly appreciate interim funding pending the final allocation of grants. Well, that does sort of uh, beg the question on, on all of them. On all of them, because, uh, you know, some people have a cash flow issue. Uh, you can't really ask private citizens to fund municipal funding. It's really just an issue with seniors because this is their first year getting the grant. So, um, with the other ones, they. Although they ask for it annually, they understand when they get the funding, so it's, it's a unique problem because it's their first year. Part of it's been addressed because we got an extension of the seniors grant until the end of February, so they're funded until then, and then, I've, I've spoken to um, Louis about this, they'll be, um, you know, but then we'll know whether or not their grant's been approved, so we would have the authority to advance them some if they required it. But because they got that two month extension, they may not. But I have spoken to him about it. It's a unique problem because it's the first year they're asking for it. So the other ones actually leapfrog the year. They use half of last year's and half of this year. To a certain extent, I think they do. They know how to do their cash flow and they recognize they don't get yeah. money until But they've got a lot of cash in their May. current account. So they don't get the money until May, but when would they actually know if their budget is approved? Um, they'll generally know early, early March, and I, I let them know. Okay. I mean, the formality is, um, you know, the actual adoption of the five-year plan, but I, mm -hmm. I do let them know. Okay, so action on this one. Back to staff. Is, is that right? You good with that? Okay. Thanks. Okay. Whew. Does anybody else throat hurt? Um, back to the agenda, and we are now going to go into uh, new business. Uh, 
just before we do that, and, and my apologies because when we were at committees, I should have brought forward the recommendation from your council strategy committee that it be recommended to council that the percentage increases for water, sewer, solid waste, as you've discussed, um, be used for the 2016 draft budget purposes. So if you want to um, revisit that, that's what's been We can do that on a new business. I'd be just sure. as happy okay. to do that right. on a new business because it is, it is a committee recommendation. Yes, I understand. But yeah. Uh, this is as good. So, are we actually adopting that recommendation, accepting the recommendation, uh, well, resolving the recommendation? That's that's the recommendation that's come forward from the committee. So, um, you can introduce the the recommendation and, and vote on it, or accept it, and adopt it, or not. So, do we adopt the recommendation? Do we approve the recommendation? What's the what's you the? You would pass a motion. Well, you would pass a motion that. Um, that yes, you, the council will go ahead and, and uh, approve the recommendation. Yeah. Does that work for you, Pam? Yeah, I'll, I'll massage the wording. But, uh, what was the recommendation? 12%? 12%, 5%, 2%. 2 5 2 yeah. Regardless of Perfect. the capital costs that uh, actually end up, let's hope that they're not higher than we know. Right than we know. <coughs> yeah? Okay, so uh, I'll, I'll take a motion on, as read. Please. Thanks. And a second. Um, further discussion? Call the question. All in favor of the motion as read by CEO uh, PDJ? Can, could he reread it again? Can you? Well, it's a bit late now because we've uh, oh. called the question, but oh, go sorry. ahead. 12 5 question on that. That would be received. Uh, sorry, that would be recommended to council that the percentage increases for water 12%, sewer 5%, and solid waste 2% be used for 2016 draft budget purposes. The motion is to accept staff's recommendation. Okay, and so I'll just take a uh, re-vote on that one. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay, so that uh, that passes. Um, so you can now go and push the button on the bill printing machine, because I know you've got it already. I have to do first, second, and reading and adoption. Oh, there's that. Okay. Okay, let's see. Pardon? Were there any others that we had to bring forward? I think the others are more or less uh, to come back with, with things. There's nothing pressing to this meeting. So, um, yeah, there were information. Mm. Was yeah. there not one? Yeah. The staff be directed to incorporate edited supplementary budget requests into the draft 2016 budget. Uh, that's just something that staff's going to do and bring back. So, uh, okay. Yeah. Do you want to just quickly give it a quick shift just mm -hmm. in case? Pardon? Do you want to just give it a quick look? Are you are you are you happy with the resolution? That's the only resolution we need. Yeah, I, I did go through these as we were going oh, through the okay. meeting. So yeah. Good. That's okay. The, the so um, how you want to massage that into the agenda? Yeah. As but I mean, if we need to, that could have gone under new business. Yeah. So that's right. all cool. Public questions and comments. Susan. I don't know how you can stand, sit there without wanting to say something. <laughs> Resolution to close the meeting. The meeting will be closed to the public under the authority of the community charter under sections 91 C, E, F, I, and for the first time, N. It's a new one. Um, <coughs> that was the motion. Can I have a second? And all in favor, opposed, carried. Okay, the meeting is closed. Thank you very much to the... <laughs> Staff, public, and others for attending. Mm. Nothing but fun at Lions Bay Council meetings. <coughs> Take a five minute. Yeah, sure. You bet. Yeah, yeah, I'll do it now. Okay, uh, stop recording at 9 of. Motion to reopen the meeting. Okay, motion to reopen. Um, second, all in favor, opposed, carried. The okay. meeting's open. And a uh, motion to adjourn. All in favor, vote carried. Meeting adjourned at uh, 10. 16. 14. Well, we've got. That's wrong. I can tell you our meetings are not like today. Yeah, this is. I had hoped to get this one uh, moved along, but.